Okay, in this video we're going to simplify complex fractions. So here's example um, 1 and 2. Here's example 3. Then let's see, example 4, example 5, and example 6. Right? Okay, so let's start with um, example 1. And um, 4 ninths over 2 ninths is actually what we have. The first trick is to realize that this is a fraction 4 ninths divided by this fraction 2 ninths. Okay, so the middle fraction bar is the most important one to understand. So you have a fraction divided by a fraction. And it'd be nice to kind of just rewrite this, this fella, as 4 ninths, and instead of using this middle fraction bar, I'm going to replace that with a divide by sign. 4 ninths divided by 2 ninths, okay? And then we're in business because we know how to do it now. So the new concept that we're going to learn here is that if you have three fraction bars, the middle one means divide, and that, so you've got one fraction. Uh, divided by another fraction. Okay, and you just rewrite it like this, and then you can do it. So this is basically a review of dividing fractions. These few couple of questions. So by all means, you know, press pause and see if you can get the right answer, or race me, see if you can do it faster than me. That's fine, whichever. Okay, so um, we've got four ninths, and if I'm dividing by this, do you remember what you need to do when you divide by fractions? You need to multiply that by. When you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. Flip it upside down, 9 over 2. Ooh, not 9 over 2, not 9 over 9. Now, can you cross cancel anything? Yep. 9 into 9 goes once, 9 into 9 goes once. Ooh, that was nice. How about anything else? 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 4 goes twice. Right? So now I can multiply across. 2 times 1 is 2 over. 1 times 1 is 1. And what's 2 over 1? It's just 2, right? So by all means, do this one. 13 over 20 over 15 over 10. <laughs> okay. Press pause and try it. Okay, now I'm going to do it. The big trick with this is to realize that the middle fraction bar it means divide. And so you have this fraction divided by this fraction. Okay. And I'm going to rewrite it as 13 twentieths divided by 15 tenths. And now we're in business because we know how to do this from here. We've done this before. So it's a nice review of dividing fractions, basically. So if I divide fractions, go ahead and, you know, do the rest. You have 13 twentieths, right? Multiplied by what? Flip this guy upside down. 10 over 15. Now, what cross cancels? Anything? Does 10 go into 20? 10 to 10 goes once, 10 into 20 goes twice. Now, does anything else cross cancel? No, so we can multiply across. 13 times 1 is 13. 2 times 15 is 30. And we have 13 over 30. And that doesn't simplify, does it? Right, so this was 2, that's 13 over 30. Okay, so on to example three. One third plus a quarter over one third minus a quarter. Interesting. Okay, if we end up, I mean, what do you think we should do first? First of all, just have a have a think, like, or, or by all means, press pause and just go ahead and see if you can figure the thing out all by yourself. Okay, what what kind of logically do you think you should probably do here? Well, you know, if I I can't really do anything with this until I actually add these at the top and then subtract these on the bottom. I mean, nothing's going to happen until I do that anyway. So, yeah, what we've got to do is go ahead and just add these fractions here. So, what do I plug here and here to make the bottoms the same? Or, in other words, find the lowest common denominator for thirds and quarters. Right? So you can either 
say, well, if I plug a 4 here and a 3 here, the bottoms are the same, 3 times 4. Or you can go 4, 8, 12. 3, you know, uh, 4 goes into 12 and 3 goes into 12. You'll find that 12 is the lowest common denominator, right? Anyway, so multiply this one by 4 over 4 and this one by 3 over 3. And um, on the top now, you see, I guess, um, 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths, okay? So that is equal to, I'm just going to use this part of the book. So that is equal to 4 twelfths and 3 twelfths is, in fact, uh, 7 twelfths, isn't it? Okay. Now, on the bottom, what do I do here? I've got thirds and quarters again, same thing, right? So we go multiply this guy by 4 and this guy by 3. Now the bottoms are the same. They're both 12s. So times that by 4 over 4, times this guy by 3 over 3. And of course this fraction bar stays there, see? See, that stays there. So I get uh, 4 twelfths minus uh, 3 twelfths, which is 1 twelfth. So the point is, once we go ahead and add, just figure, figure the thing out on the top and figure the thing out in the bottom, we get to this point, and we've just done these problems, haven't we? Do you know what to do next here? Well, you remember that the middle fraction bar it means divide. You've got this fraction divided by this fraction, okay? So you can rewrite that as um, 7 twelfths divided by, so this middle fraction bar is divided by 1 twelfth, and then calculate it from there. Sorry, 1 twelfth. Okay, so that is of course 7 twelfths multiplied by flip 12 over 1 over 12 upside down, 12 over 1. What cross cancels? 12 and 12 goes once, 12 and 12 goes once. Now, 7 times 1, 7 over 1 times 1 is 1. The answer is 7, right? So, um, basically, I um, uh, calculated the top, didn't I? Then we calculated the bottom. And then we turn middle fraction bar into a divide by sign. And then we went from there, okay? So if you want to write out steps for this, I would suggest to um, to um, calculate or, or figure out or calculate top um, calculate top calculate bottom of the complex fraction. So calculate the top, calculate the bottom, and then we um, um, use the divide by sign, okay, and then we're good to go. Okay, you should be good to go after that. Right? So basically, calculate top, calculate bottom, then use the divide by sign for the middle fraction bar, and you're good to go after that. After that. Okay, so let's have a look at example four. It is 7 twentieths minus 3 tenths over 1 tenth plus 11 twentieths. So the trick is to calculate the top, calculate the bottom, turn the middle fraction bar into a divide by sign and you're good to go, right? So by all means press pause and try it yourself. I'm going to go through it slowly anyway, right? And of course you can race me so you can get done faster. Anyway, okay. So, how can I get a lowest common denominator here? What number does 10 and 20 both go into? Let's see. 10 times what gives 20? 10 times 2, right? Yep. So this top becomes 7 twentieths minus 3 times 2, 6 twentieths, which is 1 twentieth. And of course, the divide by stays there. And how about the bottom? You need a lowest common denominator to add these guys, don't you? Want to multiply 10 by to get 20? 
Multiply this guy by 2. 2 times 10 is 20, right? 2 over 2. So 1 tenth becomes 2 twentieths. 2 twentieths plus 11 twentieths is um, 13 twentieths. Okay? So I have 1 over 20 divided by 13 over 20. You can put equal signs in, in between here if you like. So what we have is 1 over 20 divided by the bottom, 13 twentieths. Okay? And you need to go, okay, 1 over 20 multiplied by what? Flip it upside down, 20 over 13. Now, what cross cancels? 20 to 20 goes once, here and here. So, multiply across, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 13 is 13. And that's as simple as it gets, you cannot put this in lower terms, so 1 over 13 is the answer, right? Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look at example 5. We've got a complex fraction. Make this bold to remind yourself that that's going to be a divide by sign soon. We're going to calculate the top, then we're going to calculate the bottom, then we're going to use this, write this as a divide by sign, okay, and then we'll, we'll be able to get it from there, right? So calculating the top, I've got 1 plus 3 quarters. So. Oh my goodness, how do you write 1 as a fraction? <coughs> okay, how about 1 over 1? Isn't that correct? 1 is 1 over 1, right? So I've got 1 over 1 plus 3 over 4, okay? How do I make the bottoms the same? One dollar is the same as four quarters, isn't it? So times this guy by four over four, and your one dollar becomes four quarters, right? So one dollar plus three quarters, of course, is the same thing as four quarters plus three quarters, which is seven quarters. A dollar and three quarters is seven quarters, isn't it? Okay, now figure out the bottom. One, write that as a fraction. One over one. Make the bottoms the same. Times it by four in the bottom and four in the top, right? So the one be again the one dollar becomes four quarters again. And four quarters minus three quarters becomes four quarters minus three quarters becomes one quarter, right? So get as far as there. Seven quarters divided by one quarter. Write that out. Seven quarters. This middle fraction bar becomes a divide by sign because it's this fraction divided by this fraction, right? It's seven quarters divided by one quarter, right? So go ahead and get the answer. That's seven quarters, seven over four multiplied by, flip this one, four over one. Can you cross cancel? Four into four goes once here and here. I get 7 times 1 is 7 over 1 times 1 is 1. What's 7 over 1? 7, right? So the answer is 7. Alrighty, so let's, let's look at example 6. By all means, press pause and do it yourself and then see if you can see if you got the right answer. Or you can try and go faster than me and, and, and get me raise me to the end or whatever you like. Okay. So we've got this complex fraction and um, we had a couple of steps there. First step is to calculate the top and calculate the bottom. And then turn this um, middle fraction bar into a, a divide by sign, right? Okay. So we'll calculate the top. 9 minus 13 fifths. What's 9 as a fraction? Is it 9 over 1? Right? Now, can you make the bottoms the same? Times this, 1 times what gives 5? 1 times 5, isn't it? 
So I'm going to multiply this guy by 5 over 5. 9 times 5 is 45. 45 over 5, right? Minus, minus 13 over 5, which gives 45 minus 13. 5 minus 3 is 2. 4 minus 1 is 3. And of course, so it's 32 fifths. Okay? 45 fifths minus 13 fifths gives me 32 fifths. Now, deal with this at the bottom. So we've calculated the top, that's good. So that was the first step, right? We have to calculate the top, check, done. Now we need to calculate the bottom. So, 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. Now, can you get a lowest common denominator here? 1 times what gives 10? 1 times 10? 2 times what gives... And you got to multiply top by 10 as well, right? So 2 times 10 is 20, 20 tenths. So 2 becomes 20 over 10, right? Or 20 dimes. $2 is the same thing as 20 dimes, right? Yeah. Plus, plus 11 tenths gives what? 20 dimes and 11 dimes is how many dimes? 31 dimes. 31 tenths, okay? So I have 32 over 5 divided by 31 over 10. So it's this fraction divided by this fraction. And I'm going to write it as 32 over 5 divided by 31 over 10. And you know how to divide fractions, right? 32 over 5 multiplied by, flip this guy, 10 over 31. Now, anything cross cancel there? 5 and the 5 goes once, 5 and the 10 goes twice. Anything else? I don't see anything. So if I multiply the tops, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, so 64 over 31. So that's the answer as an improper fraction. I'm going to also give the answer as a mixed number. So let's see, 31 into 64 would probably, well 2 to the 30s is 60, so it's probably going to go twice I would say. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, subtract, uh, we get 2, so 2, remainder 2, right? So the answer is 31, that goes twice, remainder 2, so it's 2 and 2 31sts, right?